Yeah. So here I welcome you all. A very hilarious morning to all of you who have joined us today for this webinar series. I, Dr. Yashika Arora Malhotra, uh, welcome you all to this uh, webinar series, day three, on a comprehensive study on orbital of medicine. Uh, with Dr. Jagase and Homeopathy 360. So I hereby welcome you all to the series. Before we begin this session, I want to uh, discuss this and I want to share with you uh, a short uh, description about Homeopathy 360. As you all know, it is an online portal which is organizing webinars and updating news and articles and everything on their website that is www www.homeopathy360.com. I would like to thank Mr. Manish Jain and the team of Homeopathy360 for organizing this webinar series with Dr. Jagus. And also, I would like to welcome our speaker of the day and this series, Dr. Jagus, is here with us. Share the screen slide. Turn screen share on. Sorry, I, there was an internet glitch at my end. Uh, so we, today we will be discussing the rules. I welcome our speaker. So please, I, I would like to request you to hand, uh, take this session from now, sir. Over to you. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, Yashika, very much. Now I'll do screen sharing. Can you see the screen? Is the screen seen? Yashika, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. OK, fine. I'll start. Thank you. So good morning, everybody. Today, we will be doing the rules for analysis and evaluation. That means when you take the case, after taking the case, you have to solve the case and find out the simulimum. So in order to find out the simulimum, first we have to analyze the case, then we have to do synthesis of the case, and lastly the evaluation or basically the totality. And then from there, either we can use the repertorial or the non-repertorial approach and find out the simulimum. So let us see today what, what are the rules and for 
for analysis and evaluation. Well, in the introduction, case taking and case processing demands for the physician intelligence, art, great patience, and once the case has been taken and recorded with proper details, it is possible to do the processing and it will eventually lead to the first correct prescription. So basically, in the case taking, number one, the physician should be intelligent. He should have the art of finding out the PQRS symptoms. And naturally for that, you have to have great patience. And once you've done that, once with your art, you have elicited the case properly, you have perceived the case properly, then you can, you can further process the case. And that will eventually lead you to the correct first description. Now, analysis, according to the Oxford Dictionary, the meaning is a detailed examination or study, breakdown, dissection, fractionation or interpretation. That means what in analysis, what are we doing? We are basically having a detailed study of the case in hand or we are breaking down the case into various components or basically we are dissecting the case into various components or making small, small fractions of it and giving its interpretation. So the definition can be, it is a logical resolving of the symptomatology into different components and further splitting them into variable units as per the hierarchy. That means what, whatever symptoms we have got using our method of inductive logic, we are splitting it into different parts or different components and then again we are splitting it into further subcomponents if applicable. It includes tracing of the source and discovering the interaction of patient and the environment underlying the individual phenomena of the disease. So basically what are we doing in homeopathy? We are trying to find out the source. That means what the ailments from if it is possible or if it, if it is in the case. And naturally what are we doing? We are seeing the interaction of the patient with the environmental stressors. As you all know, the environmental stressors are constantly bombarding the individual from all directions and when the adaptability has been lost, the vital force gets deranged and the signs and symptoms come back. So therefore, or rather they are exhibited. So therefore, basically, we are have to identify the phenomena of the disease in the particular individual. Or basically, in simple terms, if you want to put it, it will be the classification of symptoms into the various groups, which is known as analysis. So basically, in a nutshell, analysis is nothing but classifying the symptoms into the different groups. Now process of data evaluation, the data is collected, then the interpretation is done and symptoms are categorized into various groups, that is the analysis, we shall see later on what are these groups. Then these groups are collected and put under three broad headings, mental, physical, general and physical particular. So you have analyzed, you have analyzed the case then you are doing the synthesis. That means what in analysis, it is a total jumble. You have, you have got one mental symptom, one physical particular, one physical gender symptom at different parts of the case. So now what are you doing in synthesis? You're collecting all the mental symptoms, you're collecting all the physical gender symptoms, and you're collecting all the physical particular symptoms and putting it in a particular order. And from there, we are doing the evaluation. The last thing, symptoms are graded according to their importance. So that means what? Your synthesis should be perfect. If your synthesis is wrong, then your evaluation also will go wrong. Because when we group the symptoms into various groups like mentals, physical genitals, physical particulars, we are putting it in the order of its importance. The most importance first and the last importance or the least importance last. Like that for the mental, physical genital and physical particular. So your basically your, your grouping of symptoms or your numbering of symptoms should be as per its importance. As we go forward, this will become more clear. Now, let us see the different authors and their way of classification of the symptoms. Dr. Hanneman classifies common symptoms, he calls it as general symptoms, that is the general symptoms of the disease, which are helpful for the diagnosis of the disease, or uncommon symptoms, which are helpful for the diagnosis of the remedy, or characteristic symptoms, or rare symptoms, or peculiar symptoms, which we are taking to identify the remedy. Then the genders can be again classified into the mental and the physical, even PQRS, and the particulars in the location, sensation and modality. So particular should be described 
along in the LSMC form, that is location, sensation, modality, with or without concomitants. Now, let us just see something about now common symptoms. So it is seen, as you all know, common symptoms are seen in the majority of the provers, or many provers. They are of good diagnostic value, that means they help you to only diagnose the case, and they are less useful from the prescriptive point of view. So however, from the prescription point of view, common symptoms are not useful until and unless they are of a high intensity. Now, particular symptoms, on the other hand, it represents an area, a location, a part, a system, a tissue, or an organ infection. So basically, you are seeing a particular location. And, the, and whenever a particular part, location, area is involved, the patient will always use the word my. He will always say, my head is paining, my limbs are paining etc. Whereas in the physical gender symptom, it represents the patient as a whole and it expresses by the word I. Patient will say, I am not feeling well. So that's on a gender level. Now Dr. J.T. Kent has classified the gender symptoms into mental and physical, then the particulars, the common and the PQRS symptoms. Boring you said, according to the LSMC form, location, sensation, modality, and concomitant, and it is grand generalization by saying that whatever is deficient or whatever is present in two or more locations can be put into an gen that can be put into an gender class. So therefore, he says that in a symptom, you may not get a particular sensation or a modality, then you can you can use it as a and you can upgrade it to an general symptom. Boger, he gave importance to modalities, mind, sensation, objective symptoms, part affected, and the last separate symptom and concomitants. Garth Bori, he gave importance to the basic symptoms or the determinative symptom, that is those symptoms which will help you to guide the correct prescription, that is the individualistic symptoms or the characteristic or the PQRS symptoms. Then the mental, physical, then the absolute, the cause, the type, the location, character, concomitant, and modalities. Now, gender classification of symptoms. The most of the authors have divided the symptoms, as you as you all have seen, into either general, characteristic, and particular. Now, in analysis, can be done by identifying the symptoms. So, in analysis, basically, what are you doing? You are grouping it. You are grouping the symptoms into various groups. Like you have to identify in a case what are the common symptoms, what are the characteristic symptoms. What are the physical gender symptoms, physical particular symptom, and symptoms pertaining to the, to the mentals or the will, emotion, intellect, and subconscious? You also have to identify the pathological symptom, any abrasions of perception that is illusion, delusion, and hallucination. And generally, all symptoms in the case will be of a physical gender type. All eliminations also will be of a physical gender type. So most of the symptoms are physical gender type and even all the eliminations like the urination, the passage of stools, perspiration, menses, all this will be generally of the physical gender symptom. Like urine, stool, perspiration, menstrual discharge, appetite, curse, desires, aversion, digestion, sleep, thermal states, these are all physical gender symptoms. So you see in physical gender you have got a very broad uh, symptomatology base. A physical gender symptom will become a particular symptom when it is characterized by a particular sensation. Now this is very important to remember that as I have told you that all this comes under the heading of the physical gender symptom. But a physical gender symptom can become a particular symptom when it is characterized by a particular sensation. Now let me explain it to you in a better, fa better fashion. Remember that Frequency in a symptom still is a general symptom. Example, has to go every two hours for passing urine. So with the exception of frequency, everything else which characterizes the particular symptom will become I mean, the general symptom, which characterizes the general symptom will become a particular symptom. Remember that a cat's pain will then make symptom a particular one. Example, burning pain while passing urine. As I told you, urination, passing stools, these are all general symptoms. But however, if you get burning pain before passing urination or during or after. So this burning pain, it characterizes the generals. So it becomes a particular. However, as I told you, the frequency doesn't make it a general symptom. For example, 
desire to urinate every two hourly. Now that will not become a particular symptom. So frequency is excluded. Only anything which characterizes the general symptom will become a particular. So I hope I'm very clear out here. Your fundamentals should be very clear. So I repeat, all eliminations are general. When characterized by a specific type of pain, then it becomes a particular symptom. Frequency is not included there. Example, burning, ur burning urination becomes a particular symptom, whereas frequency of urination doesn't characterize it as a particular symptom. It will still remain as a general symptom. Now, in evaluation, the principles of grading or ranking of different kinds of symptoms into order of priority. So basically, we are we are grading the symptoms on the order of priority, from most importance to the least importance. They are matched with the drug symptoms in order to cover the cat in totality in a natural disease condition with that of the drug disease. So basically, evaluation helps us to identify the simulimum with the help of the characteristic totality and we are matching the characteristic totality of the natural disease with, with that of the drug disease. So basically in evaluation, whatever is more important, we are keeping first, least important, we are keeping last. And we are going in order of mentals, physical genitals, particulars, and lastly the pathology, if anything characteristic is present out there. Proper evaluation of symptom is the most important step next to case taking in home. So this is very important. So actually all the steps are important but out of that your evaluation becomes the of utmost importance because it is the core or the prime area in which you are going to identify the similar. In evaluation of the case the value of symptom must be taken into consideration on several points. So basically in evaluation you are seeing which symptoms are of more value which symptoms are of less value. So basically symptoms are ranked according to the intensity how deeply they reach into the organism and according to the degree of peculiarity. Now, what is the need for evaluation? All the symptoms in a given case are not important and also do not have the same value. So naturally in a case if you have got many symptoms, all of them may not be useful to identify the remedy. Only those symptoms which are characteristic, which are of a great intensity and which have a good value will be taken into consideration. Symptoms have to be arranged in a particular order to identify the symptom. So therefore, this in this the word synthesis will come. So in a particular order, you are arranging, you are arranging the mental symptoms, then the physical, general, particulars, and lastly the pathology. Different schools of philosophy have different rules for evaluation. So different personalities of homeopathy, they have their own rules for evaluation. So let us see the method by Dr. Hanneman. So he categorized, he categorized the symptom into the general symptom and the uncommon symptom. So basically for evaluation, Dr. Hanneman said that we have to take into consideration the physical and general symptoms as well as the uncommon PQRS, QRA, stain symptom at present 152 to 153. So in episode 153 says in the search for homeopathic specific remedy, that is to say, in this comparison of the collective symptoms of the natural disease with the list of symptoms of known medicines, in order to find out among these an artificial morphic agent corresponding by similarity to the disease to be cured. So naturally, whatever disease is there to be cured, we are taking the characteristic totality and we are trying to match the totality with the drug disease. The more striking, singular, uncommon and peculiar into bracket characteristic signs and symptoms of the case of disease are chiefly and most solely to be kept in view. So therefore, Dr. Hanneman reminds us that in order to prescribe correctly or in order to have the correct totality, in order to have the correct evaluation, which symptoms must you take? You must take the striking, singular, uncommon, peculiar or characteristic signs and symptoms. For it is more particularly that these are very similar ones in the list of symptoms of the selected medicine must correspond to. So what are we doing? We are we are corresponding the characteristic symptoms of the disease to the characteristic symptoms of the indicated remedy according to the totality of symptoms by using the law of symptoms in order to constitute in the most suitable uh, suitable for affecting the cure. So if you do it, if you do it by this method, then naturally it will be the most suitable uh, way of curing the disease. The more general and undefined symptoms like loss of appetite, headache 
irritability, restlessness, restless sleep, discomfort, and so forth, demand but little attention when that of vague and indefinite character. So therefore, he says the more general and undefined symptoms. So like, so the symptoms which are not very important or which are not which are not well defined, like headache, appetite, etc., etc., or symptoms which are very vague in nature or not of a very definite character. So symptoms which are, which are basically incomplete, which are hazy, which are ill-defined, uh, or which do not have any characteristic feature attached to it. So that you, are, you do not have to take. If they cannot be more accurately described, a symptom of a general nature are observed for every disease and for almost every drug. So therefore, he says that all these general undefined symptoms will be seen in most of the diseases as well as in most of the drugs. Like for example, loss of appetite, you will see it in so many drugs as well as in so many diseases. So it doesn't become important for us to take that into consideration from the totality. It has to be characteristic in nature, then only you take it. In Aphrosem 2.11, he says, this whole good to such an extent that the state of disposition of the patient often chiefly determines the selection of the homeopathic remedy. Now, this is very important under mental disease 210 to 230, especially in aphorism number 211, he gives you the importance of the word disposition. So, basically, you have to identify the disposition of the patient. So, the disposition will be obtained from the mental symptoms, from the physical general symptoms, as well as the constitution of the patient. In my previous webinars, I had given you a whole flow chart in which I had written regarding the evolution of the disease, the predisposition, the disposition, the diathesis, the levels of expression and the expression of the disease. So out here, we have to give importance to disposition. Dr. Dr. Hanneman also emphasizes in episode number 211, 211. So he says the disposition of the patient often chiefly determines the selection of the homeopathic remedy as being a decidedly characteristic symptom which can least of all remain concealed from the accurately observing physician. So why is the disposition important? Because the disposition will have these characteristic symptoms which the physician has to identify in order to prescribe therapy. Now, the Kentian method, however, in disposition also and under 211, under the footnote, he has also given that Naxwamika will not be given to a mild general disposition. Pulse, uh, then he is given also Ignisha will not be given to a disposition who is not sad and morose. So basically you have to identify the correct disposition and then prescribe. So disposition is obtained how the patient looks, the mental symptoms, the physical gender, characteristic symptoms and the particular symptoms if at all if they are characteristic. Now Kentian method. Kent was the first to introduce the scheme of analysis, evaluation and gradation of symptoms to reach the similar. So as you all know, Kent is also a great stalwart of homeopathy and he also has put his own method. Kent has given the highest emphasis to mental genders reflecting the innermost of the patients. As you all know, Dr. Kent, he gave the importance to the mind, the mental symptoms. Even if you read your Kent's lectures on philosophy, the, the lecture over number one or the first lecture, the sick, he has given he has given that the, that is the inner man first gets affected, then the outer man gets affected. Inner man constitutes of the will and the understanding. When that gets affected, then the signs and symptoms are reflected on the outer man. Whereas Dr. Hanneman in his Organon 6th edition in the aphorism number 1, he says the sick is, is that in which the vital force gets deranged and the symptoms are exhibited on the physical level. But Kent disagreed with that. He, he said that initially the mind is deranged, that is the inner man, that is the will and the understanding, and then from there it goes on to the physical part. This is the difference between the Kentian approach and the Hanimanian approach regarding the sick. As you all know, Kent made Matera Medica more interesting by forming drug pictures or telling it in a story form as compared to Dr. Hanneman in which in his Matera Medica Pura he has just written down the symptoms as they appear in the patient. So that is quite boring or that is quite difficult to, to learn or to or to memorize. Whereas Kent made Matera Medica more, in, more interesting by forming pictures of the drugs. And his followers also like Julia Minerva Green, then uh, Margaret Tyler and 
and so on they also had pen pictures of the drug so if you read margaret tyler's book on materia medica it is very interesting and she is given each in a very concise manner so as you all can know kent gave highest importance to to the mental symptoms and he made materia medica more interesting by describing the drugs in a uh, in a in a more uh, happier manner now kent's features of evaluation so he gave importance to the mental general naturally because he believed in the mind or he, he gave more more importance to the mental symptoms then he said you have to do limited generalization and the physical generals you have to include the modalities also and characteristic particulars for the final stage of differentiation so if you want to differentiate then the particulars will be helpful in differentiating now Kentian method of grading of symptoms. He grades symptoms to general symptoms. That is the mental general grade one, which which pertains to the will, the love, the hate. Grade two, the emotions. Grade three, to intellect or understanding, and grade four to the memory. Then physical generals, grade one, two, and three. Grade one refers to sexual sphere, including the menstrual general. Grade two, symptom referring to appetite, desires, etc. Grade three, things affecting the entire physical body, they are of greater importance and may be used as eliminating symptoms. Example: weather, climate, bath, bathing, etc. The common symptoms, these symptoms, this symptom are common to a particular disease or are found in several patients as a common factor. So, common symptoms are basically those those symptoms which are seen in most of the diseases or found in several patients as a common factor or many patients also may be having uh, the same set of symptom in a different set of disease they are usually of secondary importance and do not play much role in selection of the simulum unless they have a peculiar modality so that means unless the particular symptoms are well defined then only you take it otherwise you do not otherwise you don't take the particular symptoms the particular symptoms they are those symptoms related to a particular part or organ or function of the body as you all know as it is self descriptive now importance of particular symptoms this symptom tend to disturb the patient most and he sees consultation for them only so why are particular symptoms also important because they form the chief complaint of the patient so whatever is tormenting the patient to the maximum level he comes to the physician in order to gain relief thus the prescription of acute necessity will be based on these particular so therefore in the acute in the acute phase you can definitely take the acute totality and you can prescribe based on these particulars the general helps in delineation of outline whereas particulars furnish the details to differentiate the remedy so the general symptoms will give you the framework of the medicine whereas the particular symptoms will help you to differentiate two seemingly similar remedies by with the help of the modalities strong particulars may point to a small group of remedies that help in quick prescription however if the particulars are well defined or if they have a great intensity if they have good modalities then you can immediately snapshot the prescription also the boning sense method as you all know he gave importance to quiz quid ub cubics oxalis cure human one one two meaning peculiar constitution and temperament so that is very important according to boning sense method the constitution and temperament the nature of the disease of the disease chronic disease the seat of the disease that is the location the concomitants if any that is very important then the cause of the disease that is ailments from modalities of circumstances that is that is i i that is the aggravation amelioration or the causative modality and actually the time modality is also now boga gave importance to the causation the location sensation modalities mentals including the pathology so as you all know doctors dr boga gave importance to pathology he refuted dr kent's method by saying that in all the cases you do not get mental symptoms and even in the hands of beginners it will be very difficult for the new people of who are just passed out from the colleges or who are budding homeopaths to de to determine the mental symptoms so it is difficult to fathom the mind of the patient in the hands of beginners in the hands of beginners and sometimes also even in the hands of experienced homeopathic physicians and furthermore he says also that in a deep pathological case you may not get 
the mental symptoms but you may only get the common symptoms or you may only get the gross pathology so what do you do in such instances so he was the first uh, doctor to give importance to the to the pathological general symptoms and he has described in his repertory also and even Kenton's repertory also has given many pathological rubrics. It is a misnomer saying that Kent hasn't given any importance to the, to the pathology. However, if you would count the rubrics, the pathological rubrics in Kent's repertory, which I have done for my dissertation when I was doing my MD, are around 650 pathological symptoms are given in Kent's repertory. Now, 650 approximately, I'm saying, is not a very small number. It's a, it, it is quite a large number in which Kent has given importance to. So, basically, you cannot say that Kent has totally ignored pathology. He has given it in his repertory also. So, uh, furthermore, we continue. In short, the individuality of the patient is given by tissue affinities, pathological generals, cause and effect relationship. It is possible to define the therapeutic program by knowing the drug relationship, knowledge of pace, speed and range of remedies like acute, chronic, intercurrent, sequential, complementary, inimical, antidotal, etc. So therefore, Boga also gave importance to the remedy relationship. So if we go to see each remedy will have its relationship like complementary, follows well, inimical, antidotal and duration of action. So this is given very well in Borix Materia Medica at the end of it. The drug relationship table. So from there you can identify which drugs may be acute, which drugs may be chronic, which may be in intercurrent, sequential, complementary, inimical, antidotal and so on. Now Garth Boric, the method of evaluation gave, gave importance to actual symptoms or basic symptoms and determinative symptoms. So the basic symptoms or absolute symptoms are nothing but common symptoms and determinative symptoms as, as the name suggests they are determinative of the prescription that is they are the characteristic symptoms now we go to the classification of the symptoms now the mental symptoms are further subdivided into will and emotion intellect and subconscious so will and emotions can has given the rubric feelings and affections that so what will come under will and emotions symptoms pertaining to the love hatred anger sadness fear pride, anxiety, and envy, jealousy, suspiciousness, paranoid states, etc. In intellect, the thinking and perception, and the subconscious, that is the dreams. Now, in, in intellect, we are, you may also get abrasions of perceptions, that is delusions and fixed ideas. And in perception also, Kent has put this under the repertory, will, memory, and understanding. Now, perception can be an acute perception or it could be a heightened perception that is ESP, that is extrasensory perception, which very few people possess. That means what? You can you can forecast an event that something good or bad is going to happen. Okay. Or you may also get it abnormal like, like abrasions of perception, like illusions, delusions and hallucinations. So, for the perception state, you have to be in your sound senses. You have to reason from a premise to a conclusion. You will properly analyze. You have to discriminate. You have to use your judgment. Kent says judiciousness. Value system confirms responsible action and what action you are going to take. Now, common and PQRS symptoms, after number 153, 154. 154 says if the antitype constructed from the list of symptoms of the most suitable medicines contains those peculiar, uncommon, singular and distinguishing character symptoms which are to be met in the disease to be cured in the greatest number and the greatest similarity, the medicine is the most appropriate with a specific remedy for the morbid state. So basically, he is saying, Dr. Hanneman is saying in the episode 154 that you have to take into consideration, in short, the character symptoms or the peculiar, singular, uncommon symptoms so that you can identify the specific homeopathic remedy for the specific morbid state, that is the disease. If it is to be one of a very long standing, will generally be removed next thing, so the first dose of it without any considerable disturbance. So therefore it says, this is especially true in a chronic disease, when you're taking a chronic disease, you have to take into detail all the peculiar symptoms on the mental, physical general, physical particular and the pathological level. And if you do that, then probable only one dose is required to analyze the disease. 
now now let us go to the general rules of evaluation okay so we have seen analysis the different concepts of different authors and on a broad how they are divided into mental physical general physical particulars and the pathological generals also now we go for evaluation so the mental symptoms are of the highest importance so in in a, in a case you will evaluate first the mental symptoms that means the mental symptoms as i told you they are divided into will emotion intellect and subconscious between will and emotion you have a place of perception so this is the order will most important emotion subconscious uh, intellect and subconscious so 1 2 3 for this particular order you have to go so symptoms pertaining to the will if they are characteristic will be taken first then symptoms pertaining to the emotion if characteristic will be second taken second and so on so the mental symptoms are of highest importance mental symptoms are more important than the physical general symptoms so a so a strong mental symptom will overrule a weak physical general symptom symptom pertaining to the will are more important than the emotional symptoms so if you are getting any symptom which are characteristic pertaining to the will like suicidal thoughts no desire to live wants to commit suicide that will be more important than sadness morose or grief as an emotional symptom. so it basically it will depend upon the intensity of the symptom even aberrant perceptions are more important than the emotional symptoms so as i told you between uh, the will and the emotion in between that you are getting abrasions of perception so in a case suppose you are getting an illusion delusion or hallucination then it is taken of more importance than an emotional symptom emotional symptoms are more important than symptoms pertaining to the intellect so naturally we have got be emotion than intellect so emotional symptoms are more important as pertaining to the intellect then symptom pertaining to subconscious are more important than symptom of the simple of the intellect so if you are if you are getting a particular dream or a characteristic dream which comes again and again again and again then the subconscious symptoms are important than intellect suppose you have intellect deficient memory poor memory but you have a very good, very characteristic dream of falling from a height or flying or whatever it may be so that is so that is a character symptom which will overrule a weak symptom uh, re reflecting on the intellect however please remember that a strong intellect symptom can always also overrule a weak emotional symptom so if your intellectual symptom are strong and your emotional symptoms are weak then naturally that will have the first preference that so intellect will have the first preference a strong emotional symptom can also overrule a symptom pertaining to will so if you got a strong emotional symptom also and you do not and you have and you do not have any character symptom pertaining to the will so naturally as i told you you have to give report of the will first then emotion but in this case what is happening the emotional symptoms are more important as compared to the will or they are more characteristic so therefore it will gain more importance okay so these rules are just general rules there are no watertight compartments it has to be moved according to the case according to the intensity of symptom according to the characteristic characteristicity of the symptoms also so in mental case the physical concomitants are important and vice versa this frank frank boardman has said that that in a mental case you have to try and identify the physical concomitant and and vice versa that is in the, in the physical case the mental concomitant so say for example if you have got a mental case of depression and you've taken the case and you find out a very peculiar concomitant saying that each time the patient is depressed the patient will pass milky colored urine when the depression goes away the milky colored urine is not there so how clear you are getting a exact a very very characteristic or an peculiar or an peculiar or a rare or a strange symptom you are getting so that will help you to pinpoint the remedy so frank boardman said that in the mental case physical concomitant is important and vice versa so, so if you ask me in, in in this case the remedy would be direct acid force okay acid force can be given so if you have got such characteristic symptoms which cannot be explained why it occurs then it's a snapshot prescription you can identify the remedy very fast then mental symptoms aggravation or better by physical generals are of highest rank and sensation as if also is of greatest importance so if you got sensation as if like sensation as if there are butterflies in my stomach 
or sensation as if a fetus is moving in the abdomen or sensation as if the body is made of glass or whatever it may be. So that if you, if you get it, it comes as the highest importance. The general symptoms are, are of extreme importance. The general symptoms must be strong and they must be well marked and a good number of strong particulars overrules one or more weak genders. So as I told you, the general symptoms are important as compared to particular symptoms. But however, if the particular symptoms are individualistic or peculiar or characteristic, they will definitely overrule a weak general symptom. Symptoms related to the vital organs are of more importance than those related to the less vital parts. Common particulars are considered as high ranking when the intensity is marked. So basically, a common symptom will become a, as I told you, a common symptom is not useful to, uh, in analysis, it will just help you in the diagnosis of the disease. But when the patient goes on harping or reminds you again and again, again and again of the same symptom, of the same modality, then that becomes intense and then we have to take it. For example, patient has joint pains, aggravated early morning, as soon as he gets up, better by continuous motion. Now, this is a common symptom seen in, in most, of the, most of the diseases of rheumatology. But if he constantly goes on reminding you about the same again and again, again and again, then this becomes an intense symptom. You have to write down morning aggravation plus three. A common strong particular symptom may overrule a weak general symptom. So there, that's also there. A, a common strong particular symptom also will overrule a weak general symptom. The value of a particular symptom can be raised to the level of a general symptom a sensation of particular modality is present then in two or more locations. That is also very important in evaluation that a particular symptom can be raised to a level of a general symptom. That means what? If any particular sensation or modality is present in two or more parts, it will become a general. For example, I have pain in the head which is aggravated in the morning. I have pain in the abdomen aggravated in the morning pain in the legs aggravated in the morning. So you are seeing the modality aggravated morning is common on the on symptom pertaining to the head, abdomen and extremity. So therefore a particular symptom can be raised to the level of a general. So the modality aggravated morning can be raised to a level of a general symptom if present in more than two locations. So take minimum symptoms of maximum importance. So basically in evaluation or in a case, if you, if you have synthesized the case, let's say example, you have got 20 symptoms in synthesis, in, in evaluation, it is not necessary to take all the 20 symptoms, you only take the important symptoms, that is of maximum importance. So you can take at the most 11, 12 or 13 or 14 symptoms of maximum importance. Low grade mental symptoms, aggravation or better by physical general symptoms are of higher value or the grade or grade them or, or greater than the common mental symptoms. Now, predisposing causes are of great value in chronic case prescribing. So, that also has to be meant. Uh, please uh, be, be, be a particular note of that in a chronic case, the predisposing causes should be taken into consideration. That is the predisposition. That is what the fundamental miasm. That is what the miasmatic cause, especially the fundamental miasm, which is obtained from in a case from the family history supported supported by the past history. So this forms the base on which the case is revolving around on which you are getting different presentations and these presentation or symptoms are nourished by the fundamental minds. Precipitating causes are of greater value in acute prescribing. Whereas aggravating factors or ailments from they may become more cases in which the modalities are quite marked, they may become value of a greater value in acute prescribing. Remember that a recent deviation is of maximum importance. So that is also very important. Any recent deviation from the state of health should be given utmost importance to. For example, patient says that when he has got this, this particular disease, he has become very quiet and he has become very reserved. Otherwise, he was very playful. He was very cheerful. He had many friends. Now, he hardly talks to his friends, he wants to stay alone. So this is a recent deviation which has to be given maximum importance. Even a character's discharge is of immense values like thick green discharge, stringy discharge, cord discharge, frothy discharge, etc. All this also will be of an immense value. Mental symptoms are more important than physical general symptoms as you all know. 
and physical genital symptoms are more important than the physical particular symptoms. However, a strong physical genital symptom may overrule a weak mental symptom also. So as I told you, you have to see the value, see the gradation, whatever is stronger, the stronger one will overrule the weaker. Okay, so these rules and regulations are, as I, I repeat, there are no fixed watertight compartments. They have to be moved according to the case at hand. What are the highest importance? What are the lowest importance? So therefore, a strong physical genital symptom will overrule a weak mental symptom, and a strong particular symptom may also overrule a weak general symptom. Symptom pertaining to will are of highest importance. Symptom pertaining to emotions are of are more important than intellect. Dreams of subconscious symptoms are more important than intellectual symptoms. And a strong emotional symptom will overrule a weak, weak mental symptom pertaining to the will, and a strong intellect symptom will overrule a weak emotional symptom. So these are various permutations and combinations which I've given you. What is stronger? What is weaker? And how to put it in order of evaluation. Now location is a, is is of the least importance than sensation. So that means sensation is more important than location. Sensation also is more important than the modality. Positive modality is of, the, is of the highest importance. Then comes aggravations and then comes amelioration. And lastly, the concomitants, if present, they are also important. Ailments from are of the highest value in evaluation. If it, uh, it can be ailments from a mental symptom or a physical general symptom. So then that means what ailments from grief, ailments from suppressed anger, if you are getting or ailments from head injury, whatever may, may, may be the cause, if you are getting, that is important, which has to be taken. So a cause-effect relationship has to be seen. A cat symptom is more important than a common symptom, as you all know, and a weaker symptom is more important than a characteristic symptom. Uncommon symptom is more important than a common symptom. A complete symptom is more important than an incomplete symptom, and pathological symptoms are of least importance. To be kept right last in evaluation. But however, they are important. For example, patient has on sonography a right-sided uretic calculi. So the remedies are different from right-sided to left-sided. That is why the pathology generals are of least importance. But however, they are of importance because, as I told you, right-sided remedies are different. Left-sided remedies are, are different for the renal calculi. For example. Now let me just tell you a small little case in which. Our focus is only to analyze and evaluate, to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate, not to find out the remedy. So, a 25-year-old female came for consultation on 1/10/2003. Patient was apparently all right until two years back. She had difficulty remembering her studies, as a result of which her performance college deteriorated, and she failed twice in her second year BA exam. Chief complaints: memory poor for recent events. It took a long time to comprehend the studies. Forget what she had studied the previous day. Concentration difficult. And she lost interest in her studies. She tries very hard to remember, but in past history of measles, pneumonia, worms in childhood, LASIK procedure, both eyes in 1999, delayed talking at the age of three years, bed waiting at the age of nine years, and irregular menses since 2001, and taken home with treatment at Aurangabad with little treatment. Family history, vitiligo, history of vitiligo and father, and IBS in mother. Personal history, appetite increase, thirst normal, mistress normal, bowel normal, craving salt, sweets, or hot food in order of importance, aversion to milk, digestion, occasion, retrosternal burning, perspiration in order of importance, soles, palms, nape of neck, black terrible stains, menstrual function, FMP at first at 13 years of age, regular menstrual period till 23 years of age, now irregular since 2 years, reduced flow with reddish clotted discharge last for 2 days, abdominal pain and backache before menses. Thermally hot patient, sun causes headache, sleep salivation, sleep during, dreams unremembered. Mental state, suppressed emotions, weeps easily when alone, suppressed anger, doesn't like consolation, anticipatory anxiety, fear of dogs, cockroaches, lizards, introverted personality, often accredited by contradiction. General examination, patient was conscious, cooperative and comfortable in the sitting position. Temperature is afebrile, pulse is 60 beats per minute, bradycardia, blood pressure is 110 by 70, eyes, dark circles below eyes, tongue is mapped, and neck, the anterior portion of the neck appeared to be slightly swollen, and palpation, right lobe of the hyaluronic gland was palpated. System examination was essentially normal, except in CNS, the delayed relaxation of both ankle joints. So now, let us just focus on analysis. So now, the chief complaint. You seen the chief complaint, so how will we analyze it? So what are we doing? Analysis is what? It is putting the symptom into the various groups. So in so this symptom belongs to the intellect. So we are getting 
characteristic mental intellectual symptoms pertaining to memory so under mental we are getting under intellect pertaining to memory so therefore we are writing characteristic mental symptoms pertaining to memory now appetite increase it will be a physical general symptom thirst maturation and bowel i have an analyze why because it is not a symptom please remember only symptoms are to be analyzed what is normal it is not a symptom that should not be analyzed so please remember that i repeat only symptoms have to be analyzed now craving for salt sweet sour hot food is naturally as i told you this this would be a physical general symptom but it is characteristic why because craving for salt plus for plus 3 the gradations have been given and this is with respect to craving aversion to milk again same physical characteristic with respect to craving digestion occasional retrosomal burning will become an physical particular because you are getting a particular part particular location particular organ involved analysis of the case continued perspiration on on soles palms nape of neck will become physical general characteristic symptom now why does it become a general as i told you perspiration also will become or it be present in in two or more locations become a general symptom so person on the soles palms and nape of neck present in two or more locations so hence it becomes a physical general symptom and not a physical particular symptom black table stains physical particular characteristic symptom so therefore you have to dissect it because it will fall into different groups menstrual function as i told you irregular cycles since two years is physical general symptom but abdominal pain and backache before menses flow reduced become the physical particular characteristic symptom so therefore in the symptom again you have to dissect it out in order to put it into different groups so please remember that you have to dissect it out you just can't put this the full symptom into a physical general symptom thermal mortality hot patient physical cat symptom sun causes headache positive aggravative mortality with respect to head symptom sleep salivation during sleep will become a physical particular characteristic symptom dreams unremembered mental symptom but belonging to or pertaining to or with respect to subconscious suppressed emotions will be a cat is mental emotional symptom weeps easily only when alone characteristic mental emotional symptom with a marked characteristic modality that is when alone so it is a well defined symptom expressed anger expressed anger cat is mental symptom with respect to behavior doesn't like consolation characteristic mental emo symptom with marked aggravating modality anticipatory anxiety characteristic mental emotional symptom fear of dogs with cockroaches lizard characteristic mental symptom with respect to emotions introverted personality mental symptom with respect to behavior obstinate aggravated by contradiction characteristic mental emo symptom with marked aggravation modality dark circles below the eyes physical particular characteristic objective symptom so dark circles will be a physical particular characteristic objective symptom tongue mapped again physical particular characteristic objective symptom neck entire portion of the neck etc etc physical particular characteristic pathological objective symptom delay 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 relation of both ankle joints physical particular cat pathological objective symptom so this is the this is how we have analyzed now we are doing synthesis synthesis is what which symptoms we have seen in analysis you have seen there is one symptom pertaining to physical particular then one pertaining to mental again pertaining to the physical particular so that is what in a hap as a fashion all the symptoms are arranged so now what are we doing basically in synthesis we are grouping all the mental symptoms into one group all the physical general into other and physical particulars as the third and last is the pathological genders so under mental we are giving more importance to those symptoms in a case pertaining to the will emotion intellect and subconscious so in this case i have just told you the gist of it of course there's a whole life situation etc which will help you to identify which which symptoms are more important which are less important so hence in this case suppressed emotion obsessive acted by contradiction weeps easily only when alone doesn't like consolation anticipatory anxiety fear of dogs express anger into present dreams and remember that so please remember in synthesis you have to take all the symptoms and arrange it from most importance to the least importance in physical general the craving the aversion the perspiration irregular menstrual cycle black terrible stains low reduced sleep digestion all is taken into consideration pathology dark circles below the eyes tongue map anterior portion of the neck appears sight is swollen and palpation on palpation right lower thyroid gland was palpable okay so we have done the synthesis in a correct order 
in, under each group, mental, physical, genital, physical, particular, and pathology. So now from there, in evaluation, we are only taking those things which are important. So in evaluation, I've done, as you all can see on the screen, suppress emotion, weeps easily when alone, doesn't like consolation, obstructed by contradiction, anticipatory anxiety, fear, memory, introverted personality, craving over the perspiration, menses, flow, sleep, and lastly, the pathology. So out, out here you can see I've taken a good number of symptoms which are characteristic in nature. So this is how you have to go about in a case. This is an example. You can you can do any case in a in this particular fashion. So basically your basics should be clear. If your basics or your fundamentals are clear, then you would you, you will be able to do it well. That is, you will be able to analyze a case, synthesize and evaluate and naturally identify the correct symptoms. So the conclusion is symptoms form the building blocks for our proper understanding. So basically, just like a small child, when he goes to kindergarten, he learns A, B, C, D. They are the building blocks later on for his life or in school education. Similarly, in as a homeopathy physician also, the symptoms form the building blocks for our proper understanding. If you understand the symptomatology correctly, then only you will be able to classify it into the correct classification, then only you will be able to synthesize it correctly and do the evaluation provided you know the you know the rules of evaluation. So one should know what to look for and where to look for. So this is very important. So one should look what to take and what not to take, what is important, what is not important. So basically your perception should be perfect. Symptoms are the sole expression of the internal disturbance. So why are the symptoms the building blocks? Because they are the only or the sole expression of the internal disturbance. It's a complex entity as complex and differentiated as man himself. It is the only proper understanding of these expressions in disease and the proper classification and evaluation that we can apply our guiding law, similar simus curenta, intelligently and for the benefit of the patient. So if you have a proper understanding about symptomatology, about analysis, synthesis, evaluation, then only you'll be able to apply, give the application of the law in a correct manner. So thank you very much for attending today's webinar. If you like my webinar today, you can also uh, log on to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. I have covered up most of the uh, syllabus of the UG and the PG. At present, it has totally six, 63 videos and also uh, short, short with remedies and cases seen in day to day practice, also included. These are very short videos of, of around one to three minutes in duration, in which I have given you important homeopathic remedy for an important homeopathic condition and this in my practice I have verified repeatedly again and again again and again then only I have told you so it becomes a short short description that may also help you in your practice thank you very much have a nice day now are there any questions to be answered Any questions you can type in the type in the chat box. So anyway, I feel there are no questions. So thank you very much for attending. And I would like to thank extend my thank thanks to B Jane and Homepathy 360 for the zeal and enthusiasm for conducting the different webinars by different doctors. And I also thank Mr. Manish Jain for his cooperation and help for the same. Thank you very much. Okay, so fine. Dr. Yashika is not coming. I'll end the session. Thank you very much for attending. Have a nice day.